check out some ODA projects. Come on along, we'll go see what we got. Well, we have arrived here in Tuscaroras County. Uh, we're in search of our Durapatchin crew. Um, we understand that they're out on US 250. So we'll, we'll go out and see if we can find them. Well, we must be getting close because I see we got some advanced warning signs up here. So it looks like they're starting off well by putting their uh, work zone signs up. So we'll see if we can't go out here and find them. And here we have one lane traffic uh, ahead, which lets them know that they'll be uh, restricted to one lane. They also have set up a message board uh, to alert the traffic as well. Here we have an arrow board uh, directing uh, the traffic over in the right hand lane. We have another arrow board in place, keeping that traffic alert. You see here we have a crash attenuator, and there's our crew ready for uh, starting the dirt patcher project. See, we're getting ready to start our uh, actual uh, process of uh, patching the potholes. At the beginning of the process, you want to make sure that you clean all of the debris out of the pothole. Just have a back and forth motion. You want to be careful when you get over towards the center of the road that you don't blow any of this on the oncoming traffic. Sometimes you may have to kick some of the heavier material if it's stuck in the in the pothole, or you may need to get a shovel or something to, to pick a loose chunk of asphalt out. Once you get the uh, pothole clean, then you can start spraying down the, the tack coat. Once the tack coat is in place, then you start putting a tack and gravel mixture to actually start filling the hole. Again, using a sweeping back and forth motion. While you're filling the pothole, you want to make sure that you leave it just a little high because it'll settle once the traffic starts running over it. Once the hole is filled, then you want to apply a dry coat of stone. This will keep the traffic from picking up the material. Occasionally, you will need to stop and clean out the end of the lawn. A good sign is when you see chunks begin to fall out the end of the nozzle. And remember, 
always make sure that you have some sort of cleaning device or cleaning tool on hand. Well, Dave, had us a nice, successful dirt patching operation out there today. Yeah, we did, Carl. We had a good, safe day, and we was productive with the men and equipment. Well, I was really impressed with the, the smooth operation and your work zone setup. I mean, uh, it was a moving operation. You had an aero board out there. You had a message board. You had the crash attenuator. Uh, it was very, very safe. I mean, I really felt comfortable, and it was on a four lane, so uh, it was a very safe uh, work zone setup. Thank you. But, you know, even the operation, uh, the smooth of this machine, you know, if you was to tell other parts of the state that may not have one of these at their district yet, what would you say that, that would uh, encourage them to get one of these machines? Well, we talk, talked about the availability, Carl, earlier, but let's talk about being able to do the holes, be efficient, once, fill it, and be done. We all have holes across the state that we filled one, two, even three times in the same year. Go back over and over again. We want to be able to be efficient, fill it, move on to the next one and not have to come back. Well, you know, I, something I noticed out there as well while we was working, I've seen some other areas where you've already uh, had used the dirt patcher and you said that was over a year that you actually used yes. in that area. Yeah, it was the first spring when we started up and some of those holes was areas that the guys knew we had fixed repeatedly before. We fixed them that year and they were still in this year after an entire winter. So well, I was impressed. I, it was uh, and it was no deterioration and it does hold up real well. It does. Well Dave, I want to tell you I thank you very much. Thanks Paul. Uh, down here in a beautiful uh, Amish country you see the edge of it yep. in the hills next to New Philadelphia and uh, like I say again thanks and look forward to come back down and see you. Thanks Carl. My job is to run the dirt patcher. Uh, there's a few things that I do in the morning uh, for pre-trip to make sure the machine is operating uh, correctly. Uh, I pull this wand out out of the holster. Pull this panel off. You can see the engine exposed. Uh, check the oil, the fan belt. Make sure it's at the proper level. Check all the wiring, your fan belts. Make sure there's no leaks on the motor just like you would a truck. Lock it into place. The uh, radiator cap is right here. I would check to make sure, open it up, make sure there's enough antifreeze. This engine does run a little warm. If you want it to run warm for the oil circulation uh, in the tar tank, uh, this here is your uh, your arrow for the back to help traffic um, where they're going. Uh, you test that by turning the key, push your button direct on direction on which one you want to go, and you walk back here. And physically see it working. Make sure all your lights are working in the rear. Uh, you can do different directions. There are four options. Uh, next, I go around to the back to the other side. Make sure your top lid is secured tightly. If not, you could have a mess. Uh, this tank is pressurized with air and tar. So if that lid is not tight, you're gonna have tar all over the place. Uh, one of the major things you wanna do before you move the machine is unplug it. The tar is heated by electric blanket inside the tank. Uh, so you, you wanna make sure you unplug it before you go. Uh, this is my temperature gauge. I like to have the temperature for my tar around 160. Uh, that's optimal temperature. This is my gauge. It tells me how much tar I have in the tank. Read the, read the number on the tape measure. Correspond the number with the gallons in the tank. 
This is your blow off valve that lets the air pressure out of the tank whenever you're done after the day. You want to make sure that is closed before you start up or the tank will not build pressure. Uh, this gauge here also shows you what type of pressure you have in the tank. It operates around 100 to 130 uh, pounds of pressure. This is your three-way valve. Uh, this is your closed position. That's your emulsion. Switch it to this side for the clean out. It's cleaned out by diesel. You flush the lines out with diesel. When you're done for the day, you put it back to the closed position. Uh, also, I forgot to mention on this side, that here's the air cleaner for the blower. Uh, that should be cleaned out every couple hundred hours or less, depending on the conditions. Uh, it is a vital uh, for that to be clean for the blower that blows the material out the tube. Um, also up here at the tank, this is your clean out tank and your air pressure for the clean out. That valve has to be shut to build air pressure. You relieve the pressure after the day is out. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Oh. You also obviously you want to check the tires, uh, air pressure, make sure they're not flat, the suspension and the frame for no cracks. Um, also, uh, it's a good idea to help the driver with the uh, signal lights, tail lights, and that such on the rear of the, of the trailer.